Comments made on the following paid commercial program are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. On the program this week, tax tips with David Ingram, money Marshalls, and our special guest, Danielle Park. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. I'm Sterling Fox on location in the heart of the business district in downtown Vancouver, right by the water. And it is a real pleasure to welcome back to the show, Danielle Park. Nice to see you again. Thank you so much for making the time for us hey, again. My pleasure. Danielle Park is a portfolio manager and president of Venable Park Investments in Ontario and author of a book and a blog called Juggling Dynamite, which I visit very regularly. It's a good website. Thank you. You're in town to speak at the World Resource Investment Conference. And before we get into the details of your speech, what's the mood like? How are investors feeling these days? It's interesting because I speak at this show June and January each year, and I have done for the last few years, and I would say that people are a little still skeptical this year. I think people are not uh, feeling, you know, completely recovered from the shock of what happened in uh, 2008, 2009, although they're maybe looking back to toe in, they're still concerned about, you know, whether it's safe. And are they eager to play or are they feeling a little skittish? It's a, it's a strange time on the, on the global perspective, isn't it? It is a strange time and I think, um, I think that the news overseas, the recent c concerns about Europe have brought back a whole uh, sort of a realization that the credit crisis is still with us, that it's not resolved yet and it's making people a little more concerned again. Now one of the things you talked about in Vancouver was the whole matter of currencies and commodities and the relationship between the two. Give us some more on that if you would. Please. Well, yeah, that's my number one concern because people have sort of talked about uh, a recovering China and strong demand in China as the catalyst for why commodity prices have recovered you know, to such an extreme level from the lows of 2009. And I'm trying to make the point to them, which I think is extremely important to realize, is that global demand may be an incremental increase year over year because humans are alive and we consume things. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that investment markets are not just dependent upon that demand. They take their animal spirits from the various uh, liquidity in the world and things like risk aversion. When people have risk aversion, they go back to the US dollar, capital pulls out of all these other risk assets, stocks and commodities in particular. Regardless of what the demand cycle's like, once you get that spate of risk aversion, the capital will flow out of them. And price can do a lot of really volatile things. So that, I'm trying to say that currency really is the most defining thing right now in the world. And we've seen some pretty shaky circumstances surrounding currencies, notably, of course, Danielle, the euro. Absolutely. So tell us about, uh, and the other thing I wanted to talk about, come back to currencies in a second, but you did mention a lot of commodity investment based on demand, particularly from China. There seems to be a gathering consensus that there's going to be a slowdown in China in the next nine to 12 months, not a crash, but certainly a slowdown. In fact, the government is encouraging it over there. What does that do to forecasters and investors alike in commodities? Mm -hmm. Well, I think a couple of really important things there. The Chinese uh, Chinese government was stockpiling commodities from through 2009 when everything corrected you know from copper from four dollars to a dollar 37 and oil from 147 to 37 I mean there was a lot of stuff on sale there for a brief window and the Chinese government responded by injecting huge stimulus and stockpiling these commodities that may be you know good for 2009 but it's not so good for 2010 and 11 in the sense of world demand because if world demand continues to be weak 
we've already got these huge supplies in the in the offing, sort of so to speak. So you've had a big surge in that that sort of gobbling up the stuff and putting it aside and hoping now that world demand kicks in. And I think that's the big question mark. What kind of world demand? It's not like those goods have already been consumed. They're really sort of waiting for future consumption. So they're stockpiled. In they're many stockpiled. cases, they're stockpiles of commodities. Absolutely. And the other major factor in this is the whole ETF investment theme. So what you've seen is so many funds coming out with the commodities investment theme that if you look at world futures right now are about 13 times physical demand for these products. So you've got a huge amount of leverage in the sense of capital flowing in called it maybe investing but in fact speculating in fact speculating on higher prices so if prices in fact don't go up and start to contract as they have done in the last couple of months i think you see that capital as a very risky proposition for people that are trying to invest in those sectors uh, back to currencies if you don't mind and back to the euro specifically i think the most troubled currency on the planet right now although it seems likely that eventually the U.S. dollar is going to get its turn as well, don't you think? Well, the U.S. dollar has its turn every, uh, you know, every couple of years. You see that we get these sort of legs of appetite for, quote, safe havens, which people see still as the U.S. dollar and U.S. treasuries, and so capital flowing there, and then all of a sudden a, respite or a resurgence of, of risk interest and then capital flowing out. I think it's a very uh, regular recurring phenomenon. Yes, I do expect there'll be another period where people turn off the U.S. dollar, but right now and since January, capital has been flowing in there out of the euro, out of emerging markets, out of the Canadian dollar, and these themes are what's driving the, the, the overall uh, returns right now for the world. We are looking at the future of the euro, and in fact the European Union, but the euro represents them in so many ways, particularly in the money markets. Uh, how's it looking? What are you hearing about the, uh, uh, the, the solvency of the EU? Well, there's, um, first of all, there's been some realization in the last little while that nobody has adhered to the Maastricht Treaty. So this whole idea of 3% maximum you know, uh, debt to GDP, nobody has that, right. right? Even Germany, old conservative Germany, has almost got 6% debt to GDP. And I think that it's a very interesting dichotomy. If you look at the weekend and the G20 summit that was going on, the talks that were going on in South Korea on the weekend, you have the U.S.'s Timothy Geithner flying in to say, listen guys, you need to stimulate domestic demand because we can't keep pumping money into our economy in the U.S. and it's your turn to start consuming. And you have all the other countries saying, no, we don't want to spend and force domestic consumption. We want to cut. We want to go into severe austerity measures to reduce deficits and, and debt levels, which is uh, at, at odds, right? So you have um, everybody wanting somebody else to buy their stuff and everybody else wanting to be more frugal. And these themes are not going to be supportive of really robust growth for a while. Certainly conflicting themes on a good day. Yeah. You're watching The Money and Wealth Show. We're on location in downtown Vancouver. Our special guest this week, delighted to have Danielle Park back with us. Lots more to come. Stay with us. My name is David Wolfen. I'm the president of Avino Silver and Gold Mines. Avino owns 100% of the historic Avino mine in Durango, Mexico. Mining dates back over 500 years and under our control we mined it for 27 years. We're starting on a new era of mining and we plan to reopen the mine this year. Avino trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol ASM. For more information call 604-682-3701 or visit the company's website, www.avino.com.